Hello, everybody. Welcome to an episode of the Morning Metro. It is uh, March 3rd, 2018. We, of course, your hosts, Gertrude One and Gertron, over on the desk hey. over here. And hello, Gertron. How are you today? I'm doing fan freaking past Yeah? How's your, uh, how's your evening going? It's going. It's yeah. going. I've had some pork chops, some potatoes, some burnt chicken. Mm. But you know, it's all good. I had Chick fil A for, for dinner, actually. Chick fil A is good, too. It is Chick-fil-A good, yes. Chick fil A is amazing. Archer is confused. Let's say, let's say hello to some people in chat uh, this evening. We're going to say hello, Archer. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Leo. Welcome to the stream. Morning Metro at night. What facing Kappa? Yeah. It's not morning. I'm offended, says Archer in the chat. <laughs> it's morning somewhere. It's morning. Somewhere. So- yes, it is. It, it, Actually, no, give, I think give, give I think probably Wait, in Australia. Okay, Gertrude's we're looking at where is it morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm totally just on that. And hello. Uh, it uh, is currently morning in New Delhi. Well, good morning, New Delhi. Hey. Hey, well, where's my uh, whole sec? I have, I, have, uh, I have sounds for... Oh, here it is. Hey, good morning, New Delhi. <laughs> and in Shanghai, it is 9.02 a.m. Hey, good morning, Shanghai. All right. Exactly. All right. Well, we're going to head and get up. Uh, we're going to um, probably kick off the show as I slowly roll this out. Ah, that worked out pretty well. Um, but yeah, so we've got um, sort of, well, it look okay, it looks like a small show to me only because... Um, Gertron changed how he did his note formatting, and it's blowing my mind. Really, honestly, it's morning somewhere, right, Leo? It's, it's like saying it's like saying it's five o'clock somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, it's like saying it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Actually, fun fact, really quick: where is it five o'clock somewhere? Where is it fun, five o'clock somewhere? I already closed that page. Give me just one <gasps> moment. We're gonna go find out where it's find, five o'clock somewhere. I find it. It's five, five o'clock, o'clock somewhere. somewhere. And we're talking five p.m. over here. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Five p.m. Left. somewhere. Wow, it's got to be five p.m. somewhere. This right. list is just not showing me any fives right now. That's a I shame. I got five a.m.s and four p.m.s, but where's a five? There we go in San Francisco. It is five o two p.m. and in Seattle, it's five o two p.m. and in Vancouver, it's five o two p.m. and that's all the fives I got right now. All righty, sounds like a good bit of fives. <laughs> all right all right cool we're gonna head and start off the show gertron you're at the top of the list for your articles go ahead and talk about this first oh, one if you would boy now oh, we're getting man. a little political here just As, a bit quick disclaimer for youtube um uh your your opinions of course are your own as well as ours we are not discriminating nor do we want to uh, be rude but yeah go ahead and uh go go get a little political go ahead gertron take it away obama's legacy will be that he allowed russia to sow discord in the U.S. Dum, dum, dum. Dum, 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 dum. In a recent tweet, President Trump asked, why didn't Obama do something about the Russian meddling? Well, Mm -hmm. that's a good question. Especially since, as President Trump pointed out, all of the Russian meddling took place during the Obama administration. Mm Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The answer to the President Trump's question is that over the course of eight years, eight the years, Obama yes. administration neglected to take cybersecurity seriously, even though in 2013, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta warned of a coming cyber Pearl Harbor. Basically, oh they're saying we're, we're going to have a an attack on America, very similar to Pearl Harbor, but in the cybersecurity realm of things. Oh, my gosh. You know, that's and then yeah, it, it's that, crazy. Re- re- really, really, really quick. I gotta say, you know, that's really kind of frustrating and disgusting, honestly. That like, you know, he's and ap- apparently, as I as I understand it, it was just fr- he didn't do anything about it because he did, he wanted to save face. It seemed like I think Gertrude is that what it says in the article, something like that. I don't know. If, I don't know. If, uh, we'll, we'll, oh, we'll, sort of. We'll find out. We'll sort find of. Out. We'll but that you know that. But we'll really, really quick. Okay, I think it's really disgusting that he like allowed all of this to just you know <laughs> like man the man's a joke <laughs> i mean the man's really a just just an absolute joke it's just ridiculous ridiculous ain't nobody yeah. got time for that ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and 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 you know in in 2013 that's when they got warned and then mm-hmm. again in 2014 then senator tom coburn republican and Oklahoma, who served on the Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee, published a report on the dangerous lapses in government cyber preparedness based on 40 reports and audits, including from the Government Accountability Office. Now, now, Mm. get this, get this. Federal agencies, Oberon reported, had neglected to implement even the most basic of safeguards, such (sighs) as resetting passwords or downloading software updates. Womp, womp, I womp. Mean. That's, that's ridiculous. So, so in other words, their Windows, their Windows 7 or 10, whatever, sat there completely, like, un, uh, unsecured. Basically. And not resetting passwords. Even the company I work for, we have to reset our passwords, change our passwords every 30 days. Uh-huh. Which, which, is, which is good. It's yeah. great. Why couldn't the government do that? I mean, our systems, they don't, they don't come and tell us that it's time to change. Mm-hmm. The systems are actually set to tell us, hey, time to change your password. And eventually, if you don't change it within like a week after it starts warning you, then it just says, yep, we're not going to let you in until you change it. Actually, um, yeah, actually, um, to be more specific, I do know that, yes, there are certain government agencies that actually they will, um, depending on what mail service they use, they will actually make you reset your uh your password i've had to do that for uh uncontrolled in- uh, incident that i can't disclose but yes i uh i understand that you know they they will do that they'll lock you out of your mail or whatever it is and stuff so yeah but um yeah. S- but but sitting there with unpatched unpatched computers mm-hmm. that you know and actually uh a uh, small side note um uh, when I went to go visit, uh, well, my dad was, of course, in the hospital, and he is, of course, side note to all you guys who are listening or wondering, yes, he is actually home, which is cool. Yeah. Um, I actually saw um, a computer at a hospital that still had, get ready for it, Windows 95. Holy no, cow. No joke. Like, literally, the ha- that's what it had. And I looked over the nurse's uh, shoulder and was like, man, that's Windows only five. You guys, I was like, I'm surprised you guys still run it. She said something about like, yeah, we're still running it. It's a pain to use or something like that. And I'm, I'm just like, oh my gosh. But the problem is that wow. like a lot of uh, industrial softwares, the, the companies either went out of business or they didn't bother to, to update. So, you know, then you end up having, um, you know, having that. Uh, I know uh, Leo in chat says Windows 95, what face? Yeah. Deal with it. You're right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's that's just that. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, and anything else out of this article you wish to cover here while we've oh, got it? Yeah, a- no, I've got multiple points to get on this article. All right, go right. right. Continue right right along. And then in 2015, the most significant intrusion during President Obama's two terms was the 2015 penetration of the Office of Personal Management, mm. in which sensitive information. Social security numbers, birth dates, health histories, fingerprints on over 22 million people, many with top security clearance, was stolen. Ugh. Are you kidding me? Ugh. And then later, later, now that, that breach was not unique. Mm-hmm. During the Obama years, the Pentagon, the CIA, the Department of Commerce, Department of Homeland Security, and the National Nuclear Security Administration were all hacked. <laughs> Wait, I got I got it. <laughs> Leo <laughs> says in chat, which is worse, Obama or a jet pie? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. So true. Continue, Gertrude. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> but it was the White House's tolerance of Russian intrusions mm-hmm. that, in retrospect, was the most dangerous action. In 2013, Russia took advantage of a Microsoft glitch to hack into NATO's computer systems, the mm. new Ukraine government, and several European Union agencies. President Obama did nothing to respond to this aggre- aggression emboldening Moscow. Over the next two years, Russia agents invaded the State Department and ultimately penetrated not only the White House, but also the Pentagon. The thefts of data were not as public as the plundering of the OPM by the Chinese, 
the the Russians appear to be accumulating virtual weapons. Mm. <laughs> ah, ah. Because President Obama was beholden to China for Green to join the Paris Climate Accord, and because he needed both Russia and China to sign off the Iran nuclear deal, he chose not to push back against their criminal invasions of our private and public institution. As mm-hmm. Luke Thompson has argued in the National Review, this lack of confrontation only encouraged more bad behavior. Mm. In conclusion, the Justice Department has concluded that the Russians wanted to sow discord in the United States, and this will be Obama's legacy. He allowed them to do so. Now, I have to say... I, I now I, I've I know I've got to say, yes, that for, just for, that was for you, Gertron, not for the chat. Um, that okay. I I think this right here can actually shut down that Trump is not in is it's not his fault for the things that people have been throwing at him for. Um, I don't know, like Russians being involved with criminal activity or whatever. I think this this completely clears him of it, obviously, because it's right here. It's on the internet. It's on the internet. You can trust everything you read on the internet. Right, Not really. Right. But, no, you know. yeah, yeah. but then you get enough evidence going together, and there you go. It's you enough can, to build a case. Yeah. And technically, exactly. I mean, I don't know if it'd be, I don't know if it's kind of harsh, or I don't know if it's like too extreme to say. You could almost get him for, like, treason? perhaps well, or betrayal maybe. of the Who country knows? i mean well, that's it's pretty substantial i mean we i mean look at i mean you, i mean just you got to look at like hillary clinton's server <laughs> I mean, Don't you bleach, but... right <laughs> i mean so you know Good they're cough, by the way right yeah so i mean you know, you've got to you got to kind of think about that like you know first obama well, no, actually, first, first kind of, well, actually, no, first Obama, then Hillary and stuff like that. I mean, both of them in general, but like this, this, this is ridiculous. This, this finger pointing, trying to make Trump look bad when it was really Obama's fault to, during his presidency is just, it, oh my gosh, yeah. I can't, I can't believe this guy, this guy let this stuff go on. It's like, crazy. it's unreal. Yeah, it's unreal. Ugh. uh, Leo says in chat, um, Let's not update anything or uh, let's let the internet providers do whatever they want and thus somehow getting internet to poor people, Kappa. Uh, Leo also says in chat, Donald Trump can ruin his life by saying that uh, that is fake news, Kappa. (laughs) Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, wow, crazy. Wow. All right, we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and uh, go down the uh, the article train. If you've unless you've got anything more in here, no, hello, no, Ender. Well, no. welcome to the stream. Welcome to the evening edition of the show. Welcome to the evening edition of the morning metro. Rah, cool. rah, rah, rah. Right. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the next article, which again is also um, it, it it we're taking articles because of the list of the notes. So this is technically another one that Gertrude did. He did all of his notes before me this time. No, I am I always the last one to do the notes. <laughs> Oh, last no, one no, 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 well, no. Always. It kind of goes back and forth. It goes sometimes back and forth. it's me, well, sometimes it's you. We'll usually write it on the Friday, but because of time constraints and scheduling, actually, tell you the truth, uh, side note, I could have actually stayed home and done the show in the morning, but I ended up sleeping in anyway, so rip. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, this, this article's fairly short. Go for it. It's Go ahead. Short. So, this article is called American International Toy Fair 2018 holograms and more Ooh, or that's the important part i think i'm in i think i actually opened the wrong art do i have the wrong article yeah i do have the wrong oh did i not open this article oh that's that's mm-hmm. embarrassing hold on let me go back to our desk really fast <laughs> hold on go ahead and, go, go ahead and read go ahead and read it and i'll okay. i'll get it open here all right here we go we've got the right one from fidget spinners fingerlings hatchimals the u.s toy industry has gotten some serious play over the past few years uh, in 2017 the int- industry grew to a whopping 21 billion dollars in sales according to the npd group's retail tracking service Mm. It's wow, that's a lot of money right there. Right now, so you run out of things to ask your Amazon Alexa, When in Rome by Sensible Objects Voice Originals turns your smart home device into a tabletop game for the whole family. It's great true to game where you can learn about different countries, says Burn. I, I, I'm assuming that you said that 
it asks you questions and you try to answer it and they tell you if you got it wrong or not. Basically. So this is this is a so this is a what are they talking about exactly or is this a oh, this, this is multiple new devices, new toys out so to speak. Oh okay. Is this what toys for kids or just toys in general? In, in general. In general. Oh, okay. All right. Go Moreover, ahead. emojis and make way for shareable holograms. Ooh, holograms. Yep. Simi's virtual friends by Redwood Ventures lets kids can use their tablets and phones to collect and play with a menagerie of cute virtual critters and then turn them into holograms. Nice. My favorite thing is you can actually create a hologram of yourself Ooh. and share them with other people. Ooh. Ooh. Indeed. Uh, you may have seen photos on social media of families adopting dogs or cats from shelters and pampering them back to full health. Now, kids can jump in the action with moose, toys, scruff, and love. Kids mm. take a little uncared for a ball of fluff and washing them in water, drying them off and fluffing up their fur. Children gets to rescue their very own stuffed animal. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty yeah. then. Um, That's, that, as I said, <laughs> this is a very, very short article. Let's talk about the hologram thing. Holograms. Okay. I... I'm really waiting. Actually, you know what I would really love? I would love for the day when Gertron over here, because you're on this side of my, of my, uh, you're on my left side here. So hi, Gertron. I'm huh. waiting for, I'm going to pretend to look over there. I'm going to, I'm waiting for the day, Gertron, huh. when there will be a hologram of you in my office. Like oh. you, like you could just, you, you would, we would, you would still need a webcam, obviously. You know, oh, so, you need something, you need something, but it would actually create a physical recreation of Gertron here at TMM. That'd be pretty mm -hmm. cool. And you and he could see me, obviously, as so we could, you know, it'd be video chatting, but actual 3D person. That'd be super cool. I am I cannot wait for that to be a nah. thing. Nah, I know I, I go a little farther than that. I cannot wait until the first official holodeck. Yes. Well, VR is pretty close to a holodeck to some degree. Yeah, you're, eh. you're still you're still tied down by cords and yeah. stuff. I'd like to be able to walk in and the environment just form to whatever I want it to be. Yeah, I, I know I have the, the Star Trek music somewhere in my library of sound effects, but I don't have it loaded in my Elgato stream deck, so I can't play it. Otherwise, uh. I would totally play it right now. Um, but yeah, like that would just be, I can't, I actually just can't wait for that day when we have full blown holograms. That is going to be an amazing day. But, um, it's, but 3D, um, but like 3D printer stuff and all of this stuff. I mean, like we're we're really, I think we're progressing well in the future for the most part. The only thing I'm, yeah. the only thing I'm kind of frustrated about the future at the moment that we're in is that uh, medical science is not, it does not appear to be as far along as it as it could be. Honestly, that's the only thing that mm -hmm. kind of frustrates me to some degree. Actually, um, I heard uh, caught a little tidbit. There is actually a. Um, I think it's somebody in India that has developed a special type of surgical procedure that they can actually go into the brain and actually help stop people who suffer from Parkinson's. There's no, they're, actually, there's yeah, a new procedure they're, they're that's like been, that, yeah, yeah, well, I know, but there's a new procedure that's been developed huh. that actually has cool. a really high success rate. I don't know hmm. what it's called or where it's, uh, or specifically where it's from, but that's something that I, um, caught a tidbit of uh, this week, and I thought that was really cool. So, it's it's there. It's just not in the in the mass way I would like for it to to be and stuff. But yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping that the future will keep progressing really well, and and, and soon we'll have uh, buildings made of wood too. Oh, good gravy! No, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll have we'll just have no. buildings just just made just yeah. Um, <laughs> that can only happen in. China and Japan, they they can they can build buildings out of wood, but no. Mm. Uh, let's see. I have I see the uh, the next article you have about teens use uh, 3D printing to build a new arm for his veteran dad. Ooh, now this is a good segue. Go ahead and take this article away. This is a perfect segue. Go ahead. Let's talk about that. To build a new arm for his veteran dad. An ambitious teen used his ingenuity, know-how, and a little technology to build a new arm for his veteran dad who was wounded in Iraq. St. Louis high school student Robbie Frey built a custom-made robotic prosthetic arm for his dad who is an amputee, according to Fox 2 St. Louis. Frey, who has, who has said he wants to go into robotics when he hits college, 
built the arm for his father in about three months. That's Bray's cool. Bray's father was injured in RP attack, RPG attack in 2003 in Iraq. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. But first, he built an arm adapter for the Nintendo Switch video console to allow his dad to play video games again. Aw, that's cool. That's, that's cute. And he states here, when my dad was injured in the Marines, he wasn't able to play video games with us for about 10 years. And after he created the 3D printed adapter, he was able to play with us full speed, Frey said. Aw. Yeah. Awesome. Eventually, he created a custom scan prosthetic using his dad's left hand and then mirrored it to be able to use be used for his right hand. Robbie's wow. father can now throw a ball using the prosthetic. That is amazing. Uh, yeah. And this is not the first time that Robbie has exemplified his talents, according to those who know him. He knows how to get products done and comes up with amazing things, said robotics advisor Derek Ward. He's been in the rob robotics team for six years now, so just to watch him go from a 7th grader to a 12th grader, mm. I'm not surprised he can pull something like this off. Frey, wow. who is a national merit finalist, credits his acumen and math for honing his ability to take a challenge and come up with a solution. That as is soon as cool. I start to test different alternatives, I start narrowing on something, Frey said. It's sort of more discovery than inventing in a way. Wow. Wow. Indeed. That is very, cool. very, very cool. Kudos to him. Kudos. That that is, that is absolutely her. I, I'd give this kid some... Wait, where's my crowd crowd clap? I know it's in here somewhere. Oh, yeah, here it is. That's awesome, kid. You deserve that. You deserve that. Um, Indeed. Yeah, but see, this is what I mean, though. Like, advances in technology. This kid is the example of that. Uh, if we had... Like, I, because 3D print, I, I would love to get a 3D printer. I really would, but they're so expensive. But, um, but yeah, like, um, 3D printing, I think, is one of the greatest, whoever invented a 3D printer is one of the greatest gifts to society to date, honestly. And the amount of things I have seen come out of a 3D printer is amazing. Plus, when you pair it with something like an Arduino microcontroller, which I actually do own mm -hmm. one myself, I, the, the, the possibilities are literally limitless. It's, it's, yeah. wow. Yeah, I would love to get back into some electronic stuff. I'd like to actually make some Twitch streams out of doing electronic stuff. Maybe I can go, you know, buy some small kits and just experiment with things. It'd be pretty fun. Um, but yeah, that is like really, wow, that is super cool. I, I bet his dad feels really like blessed and overwhelmed that his son is willing to do something so. Um, so heartfelt. That is really very cool, honestly. And I can really appreciate that that article. That's that is awesome. That is awesome. So and any and any time in the chat too, if you guys want to uh comment anything on our articles, please let us know and stuff. We uh, this is a very chat involved uh show. We'd love to hear what you think so far. All right. Um let's see. So this one I believe is my Yep, this is this is my turn here. Yeah. I'm doing, you've been doing most of the talking, oh. now it's my turn. Okay, um now I have been commenting for weeks. Um actually here, let me quick do a little uh little thing here. Uh within the recent uh months, I remember I touched on this a couple months ago that YouTube was threatening um uh YouTubers with uh stripping away monetization due to some new rules that have been developed. Uh, the, there are rules and guidelines that got changed. Uh, as of, I think about a week ago, all monetization of my YouTube channel has been stripped. I am no longer making money off of YouTube anymore. Uh, which I, while it was not a great amount of money, I, I am very frustrated over this. And even my YouTube network, there's nothing they can do right now at all. Uh, YouTube basically is requiring that you have 4K, like 1K followers and 4K hours or something like that. Like it's it's really ridiculous, honestly, the what they're asking of it. But um, one of the issues we ran into uh, was this uh, having this show on YouTube, and YouTube every week would come back and say to me uh, that this this show that we do uh, was not suitable for advertisers. Well, it turns out there's actually there might actually be a reason for that. Uh, Tucker, Google using discredited left wing group to flag extremist YouTube videos. 
The article reads as following as I have to click read more again. <clears throat> Tuck, uh, Tucker Carlson reported that YouTube, through its parent organization Google, is enlisting trusted flaggers to delete questionable video content from its platform. However, he said one group hired by YouTube is a Southern Poverty Law Center, which he said is not an expert on South law or poverty. Carlson said the SPLC is a hate group masquerading as a group that exposes uh, hate groups. Irony. John, uh, John Stol uh, Stol Stoller uh, reported that the group marked Dr. Ben Carson, Larry uh, in Ingram. Laura, Laura Ingram. Thank you. Uh, Laura Ingram and Judge uh, Jenny Pirro as extremists but not extremists like uh and antifa 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 thank you <laughs> that is a, sorry it was a tough name to pronounce there carlson called splc wholly discredited and asked tech entrepreneur eric uh schiffer uh for his take Schiffer said YouTube meant well when it acted to remove further questionable content like excessive violence and the like but that hiring SPLC is going too far. Schiffer warned that the SPLC could easily hit delete for uh, uh, pat uh, par person, uh, person reasons, and that Google must trans uh, must be transparent. That is such a great buzzword, isn't it? Uh, with mm. how they are uh, critiquing videos. There, there really needs to be an apology to uh, patriotic Americans who use YouTube for this gross oversight, he said. Watch more for above. Um, learn to read. <sighs> Come on, creature. I've said that dyslexic. Come on, I'm trying my best. Um, but that might actually be why our videos are getting hit mm -hmm. of TMM. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I... Uh, this because is we speak truth? And they don't like our truth. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is getting ridiculous. You know that that they're um, you know that they're ha that they're constantly hiring these groups and doing like, it, is there nothing that like, is there it, when is this foolishness going to stop? Like like really like when is this foolishness just going to stop and like people are just going to be like you know enough with like okay yes I don't no I don't want violent videos on YouTube, but I mean is freedom of speech really even a thing anymore? Does that really mm. exist? A Ger th Gertrude, thoughts, please. If you have Freedom it. of speech is a figment of our imagination. It does not exist because as soon as you say something that people don't like, you're all of a sudden criticized and you could end up in jail over it. <sighs> and they say, then, then they come up with little excuses as to why it is still freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's it's just crazy. Yeah, it's it's really it's really dumb. Uh, creature, uh, creature goes. Yeah, uh, creature. Can I kind of read? Can I get in on this? So wait for we'll have to wait for his reply back here while we uh talk about this. But yeah, I just I'm YouTube is going to. I I'm I'm really waiting for when YouTube is just going to fall apart because it's just getting progressively mm -hmm. worse. Yeah, they're 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 left wing progressives, more like left wing regressives. <laughs> in all <laughs> honesty. But yeah, it's it's just this is absolutely um absolutely ridiculous. Um Well now, did you hear about Facebook? Uh they're they've been using Snopes to no. uh review articles that are being posted by other people and marking them as not safe or not factual, even though they're completely factual. No, I didn't hear about this. Snopes Snopes has gone to the dark side as well. You used to be if you want to know if something was being fact checked properly and if it was true or not, you went to Snopes. Mm -hmm. But now, even they have become liberal and things they don't like, mm -hmm. they'll say, nope, it's not factual. Yeah. And things that they do like that hurt people, they'll say it's factual. Creature says in chat here, freedom of speech exists, but, really big but, you can say what you want until someone's offended. So as soon as you say mm -hmm. something that someone doesn't like, it's deemed unworthy for anyone to see. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. 
Yeah, no, I... Exactly. I miss where you could say whatever you wanted to, and if somebody didn't like it, they could just shut up and move off into the corner and say nothing. I think back to an episode of TMM that we um, that we did, where I believe Charlie Daniels, who is um, a very he was a country singer, said a very similar thing, where he's just like, you know, I don't. He says I don't like. There's certain things about my country that I don't like, but I don't go and cause a problem and and um, and, and and be a pain about or whatever and stuff. And that's exactly what people should, people need to go back to that mindset because if you don't like something, okay, fine, just move mm-hmm. on. Stop causing us, you know, all this like stop causing everybody trouble and just. Just let it go. Okay? Thanks. Mm. Man. All right. Uh, oh, uh, a couple more articles here. Um, this is pretty fun. Sort of some history, uh, actually, here. Yeah, let me switch to the uh, the thing here. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, here, a creature has actually one more comma here. There's a lot about America that I don't like, but I don't gripe and complain about it exactly. And neither should anybody else. Exactly. I'm moving on to a little, little, little uh, sports history. Uh, Long lost Babe Ruth recordings appear 70 years later. Recordings of uh, baseball player Babe Ruth were discovered 70 years after his passing. Foxnews.com report is saying nearly 70 years after his passing, the the uh, Sul- Sultan of Swat is still knocking them out of the park. A long lost radio interview with Babe Ruth, considered by many to be the greatest baseball player ever, has been found in the archives of the uh, Cheshire Academy, a private school in Connecticut. The interviews where listeners can hear Babe Ruth's uh, voice, along with several others, is part of a a donation by Joel uh, Hassel, a sports announcer and uh, alumnus of of the school. So far, the Cheshire Academy has released a uh, 5 minute and 14 second clip of the recording and noted that more uh, excerpts will be released soon. You can listen to the excerpt here, which um, there's a link in the article here. The 1943 recording, which lasts 13 minutes, was made during World War II and gives an intimate detail of Ruth's life, touching on subjects such as how he gripped his bat and how he got his nickname. That's actually pretty cool. I don't know if... Uh, is there a way we can actually listen to a little bit of this or not? I don't know. It's it's five minutes long. I'd um, be able to. I got to find the recording here really fast. Um, it's like there is a listen to the excerpt. Oh, here, here. we go. of the United oh. Nations, the Special Service Division of the War Department of the United States of America presents the Sports Interview. That is a long intro. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's longer than ours. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, man. To make an this intro is like Private that, Joe Hassel, USA, with another sports interview. Our guest on this program is baseball's greatest home run hitter, and from baseball's Hall of Fame, George Herman Ruth, the one and only Babe Ruth. How'd you ever get that nickname, Babe? Well, I'll tell you, Joe, next year it'll be just 30 years ago. When I was playing with Baltimore, well, before I went to Baltimore, the training camp, one of the coaches there said, look at that big babe come in here. So the name babe has stuck to me ever since. Well, how were you first attracted to baseball? Well, at school, I played ball when I started about six years old. I just grew right up with it. My one ambition was to be a ball player, and I stuck to it. Played every day, sometimes two and three games a day. So I guess that helped quite a bit. You remember your first major league game, babe? Yes, I do, Joe. Back in 1914, I was sold to Boston. Boston Red Sox. I arrived there at 12 o'clock and had to pitch the same afternoon at 3. Luckily, I won the ball game. I was knocked out in the seventh inning, but after it was all over, I was the victorious man with a score of 3 and 2. Well, you know, of course, babe, that you're best known for your very heavy hitting, and you hold many hitting records. 
But you were quite a pitcher. How about those 29 scoreless innings you pitched in World Series competition? Well, I'll tell you, a lot of people are asking me about that now. Uh, back in 1916, we played uh, Brooklyn. And uh, I happened to pitch the first ball game. And it went 14 innings. And in the 14th inning, we got a run in that 14th inning. And uh, it started off with the scoreless inning started from the second inning on. I Mars, who was the first batter up, hit a ball between Hooper and Walker, who bumped together, and he got a home run on it. From then on, I pitched scoreless innings and won 2-1 to one in the 14th inning. It was funny about that game. If I didn't get that run that 14th inning, the ball game was going to be called on account of darkness. So I was a lucky <laughs> fellow to get that run. Well, babe, wasn't that 14-inning game the longest game in World Series competition? Uh, yes, it was, Joe. But going back to where the 13 inning scoreless innings happened, in 1918, I pitched a one to nothing game against the Cubs. And then the second game against the Cubs, I went seven innings without being scored on. And that's where the 29 innings comes in. Mm. In your day as a pitcher, babe, who would you say was the hitter that gave you the most trouble? Well, that Sam Crawford gave me a lot of trouble. He was a left hander, and he always swung from the end of the bat. In those days, there was only about three fellas swinging from the end of the bat. That was Crawford, Jackson, and myself. Well, how about as a hitter? Who was the pitcher that gave you the most trouble? Well, he used to have a left-hander out there in St. Louis Browns named Pruitt. He didn't stay in the big leagues long. I didn't think he would on account of the way he threw. He would uh, swing at his arm instead of the ball. <laughs> so he was very tough for a lot of fellows. Well, babe, you always hit a long ball, and you're a big fellow. But it's more than just overpowering the ball, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, baseball is like golf. The fella that breaks his wrist, you take a little fella in golf, he'll hit a ball 300 yards, and take a big fella, and he'll hit it about 220. <laughs> but it's the breaking of the wrist and the timing. Eyes are required mostly in baseball and stepping into the ball. But as I said before, by breaking the wrist, you'll get more distance. Well, babe, you've played a lot of golf. Do you think that golf has helped your baseball or baseball has helped your golf? Well, golf doesn't do baseball any harm, especially if you don't play it during the summer. Now, a fellow can get down for spring training, or say for two or three months and play golf. It helps to get his legs in, uh, in shape and also gets his muscles loosened and his legs tough and hard for the baseball season to start. Well, how is your golf score? Well, I've been going on for years now, and finally, uh, some uh, time ago, I got my first 69, the first time I ever broke 70. <laughs> well, babe, getting back to baseball, you played other positions besides pitching in the outfield, didn't you? Yes, I did, and it was in 1918 when I pitched the two World Series games that I played first base, pitched, and played the outfield. Well, which of those jobs did you like the best? Well, I got more money out of the outfield. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a very cool interview, definitely. Uh, credit to the uh, Cheshire Academy for their recording. Mm. Um, uh, of course, to re uh, reference back to it, you can go to the CheshireAcademy.org uh, page. Looks like they have um, Joe Hassel, Babe Ruth interview on their website here. But uh, man, that's uh, that's a cool interview. That is honestly a very cool interview. Mm. Mm -hmm. Man, agreed. <laughs> All right, we're gonna head and uh, uh, hopefully make your uh, next week for those who are listening on Monday a little more useful. There's a cool website called uh, Commando, spelled with a uh, K, uh, Commando.com, and it's a website that has a series of um, tips, tricks, life hacks, uh, things like locating your missing. <laughs> Uh, corrupt uh, gadget, or sorry, I'm missing your gadget with this helpful app. Dur learning some Bitcoin stuff before you invest. Uh, cord cutters compare the best uh, uh, live streaming, uh, live TV streaming services. Resource, res uh, resourceful apps help you find your lost Android gadget, uh, and a couple other little things. The website was started by. Uh, uh, well, uh, K Kim Commando, America's digital goddess, as they refer to her, is one of America's most successful radio hosts and web entrepreneurs and a trusted guide to millions through the uh, uh, thickest of today's digital lifestyle. There's a whole interview about mm. about her and and, uh, and her website and stuff. Uh, it sounds like her radio show is actually pretty similar to ours, actually. Uh, the, the Kim Commando Show, a three-hour call-in weekly radio show on technology and, mm. and Commando's daily consumer tech update news report, are hard to, uh, are 
heard on hundreds of radio stations across the country and hundreds more around the world. Her uh, busy website, daily newsletters, numerous books, and weekly USA Today column reaches millions of others. The Kim Commando Show live production is a broadcast from Phoenix, uh, Arizona, each Saturday morning. Hey, kind of like us. Uh, it is currently carried on over 40, uh, 450 stations with uh, a, an estimated reach of 6.5 million listeners. Hey, I, I've, I've got a point out here. I was just looking through here. And I found this awesome app that I am I am probably gonna add on my phone. Mm -hmm. Just saying, just saying. Uh, it says one app everyone should have on their phone or tablet, and it just recently became available on Android. It's called Theme AI. Basically, it's for blind people Ooh. and for those who can see. So. If you can see, you're you're part of this app, and a blind person has the app that says, "Hey, I, I need to know an answer to a question." Like uh, on this case, is which one is the baked beans? And it, it randomly picks out somebody who's on uh, as a volunteer that can't see, and then they say, "Oh, it's the one on your right." So hmm. then they know that it's on the one on the right. But it it could it could be m way more than that. Hmm. Very cool. I think that's awesome. Yeah, so um, for those of you who are um, who are both watching on the show and listening on hearthis.at, the web address is www.commando, that's K-O-M-A-N-D-O dot com. And you can go through there to um, to check out different uh, things on the site, sort of like Lifehacker, but I think this kind of seems like this covers a little bit more than what Lifehacker does. Or maybe another, maybe another sort of similar um, similar website. So um, I see, I see Gertrude might be looking at uh, at the website himself now or replying to something. Not sure which. If I could have your attention, please, if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so uh, yeah, but um, that's that's kind of um, how the fudge can they use a smartphone? XD lol face. Uh, it says creature in chat. I don't know how a blind person. You know, uses it that. might actually be voice activated. Oh. Okay. See, you, you say ac you know, activate my device or activate the device and say ask the question and mm -hmm. then you know you got the little webcam on the front you just show and you're like hey I want to see what's actually there hmm interesting so interesting. yeah that that might be how it is very cool all right cool well that brings us to the um the our the, the end of our show unfortunately which is kind of uh kind, you know kind of saddens me always because I do love doing this show I know um, but any, any more uh, comments or what? Uh, you realize we're actually we're we're ending on 43 minutes, which is amazing. Well, of course, we'll be a little bit That's more like you talking. But uh, yeah. yeah, any more comments on our show? Anybody anybody in the chat will have any extra comments before we go at all? Anything? I don't think know where the phone is. It's it could be a sound thing. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I've yeah. seen. How did they, How they find, find the app? Says you know, creature in chat. Somebody helps them get the app first started on there, and or show, or they use that, or they or they use that e-site. We talked about uh, two weeks ago. Well, that's true. They could do that as well. But if they did that, they wouldn't need the app. Now, would they? Right, right, right. Okay, all right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, carry us out here. So, um, But thank you guys so, so much for um, watching, hanging out, and chatting. Uh, we'll be back uh, two weeks from now because we're doing every other Saturday now, of course. For those of you who are wondering what our uh, show schedule is, that's kind of how we're going. It. So next week will be a Let's Play in the evening. But uh, yeah, it's... But until then, uh, thank you so much, and we will catch you guys later. Have an awesome week and an awesome evening.